So with the service class now in place, I'll just go ahead and inject it into the list user component so that we can start making use to some of these methods here. So I'll open this up. And then we need to import inside here the service class. So import user service from we need to go two levels up. Shared service, user service, this one. We also need the user class inside here. Import user from, and here we also need to go two levels up. User. And I'll create here an array of users that will hold the users that will be returned from the backend. I'll call it users. Then I'll inject the service class in this constructor. So private So when this component is instantiated, this method will be called. So I will then just call this get users method from the service class in this method here. So this dot user service dot get users this one. And since it returns an observable, we can subscribe to it. The first thing we get is the users so we can just lock it to the console to see how that looks like and the next thing it returns is the error I'll also just lock it to the console So now we can head over to the browser and see how this looks like. I'll open up the console. You can see here we have an error. No access control allow origin. This is basically a security issue. By default, browsers don't allow resources to be accessed from different origin. By that, I mean our client is running on localhost 4200. And it is trying to access a resource running on localhost 8080. So in order to allow this to happen, we need to tell our REST controller that a particular origin will be accessing its resources. And we do that by using the cross origin annotation. And inside here, we specify the origin that will be accessing these resources. So origin. will be HTTP localhost 4200 we can also just go ahead and specify the headers so allowed headers I'll just set that to star which means that all the headers will be allowed so like this we have configured it in a global manner meaning all the methods in this REST controller can be accessed by that client. If you want to access, say, only this method here, then you need to specify this cross-origin annotation only on that particular method. So with that said, I will relaunch the application and once more refresh the client to see what happened. And as you can see here, we got the users from our backend. So all we need to do now back inside here is to assign those users to this array of users we declared here. So these dot users should be equal to the users that we got from the backend. I'll save that and I'll display that in a table here. So table I'll create the table header, so T head. Inside here we'll have 
the ID. So I'll just copy this. The first one here will be the ID. The next one will be the say the first name. And the last one will be the last name. Then I'll also create a T body here. And inside here we'll loop through the array of users and display the users. So TR and we use ng4 to loop through the array of users. So here we do let user of users td the first one here will be the user id so user dot id the next one will be the first name so that will be user dot f name and the last one here will be the last name save that and let's see how that looks like on the browser so we get the information like this on the browser this does not really look nice let's use bootstrap to style this back in the integrated terminal i will install bootstrap now npm install bootstrap at next this will download the latest version of bootstrap so I'll save that to the package.json file. So Bootstrap has been downloaded and we need to include Bootstrap into our project. So I'll open this uh, Angular CLI.json file. And there you see here styles. So we specify the path where Bootstrap is located. Um, here we go up one level. And Bootstrap is downloaded into node modules bootstrap dist css bootstrap dot min dot css we we'll save that and back inside here we'll add a class of table table stripe So nothing happens, I'll probably need to rebuild the application. And here I'll stop this saver and just restart it. So the project has been rebuilt. And as you can see here, bootstrap has been added. So this kind of occupies the whole page. I'll put this table in a container. So I'll open this up. And first of all, cut this. And here I'll create a div with a class of container. And inside here, I'll place this table and save. So this looks much better now. Next, I'll add two buttons here for the delete and the edit operations. So in the head here, I'll start by adding I'll call it operations. And here I'll add another TD. And inside here I'll create two buttons. So a button. We don't need the type. But rather a class here. This will be BTN. BTN danger. And it's going to be the delete button. And I'll copy this. Uh, this should be danger. I spelled this wrongly. Danger like this. And this should be BTN. BTN primer. This is going to be the edit button. And just beneath here I'll create another button. This will also be of class BTN, BTN primary. And I'll call this new user. We get the following nice looking thing. So 
in the next video we are going to see how to start implementing the delete the edit as well as the new user until then see you